fucking turd. So we here on the channel, we we have a whiteboard. It's our idea board. And I'm looking at it, and I see his name up there. I don't remember why we put his name up there, but it's up there. It just incites rage. <laughs> yeah. Not even, not even rage. I mean, yes, rage, but not necessarily directly at him, but at the idea of what he's about. So most people know who Peter Molyneux is. But if you don't, for some reason you're maybe a little bit younger or you just don't know who he is and you stumbled on this channel, Peter Molyneux is the lead – game designer for the fable series um and he is notorious for making promises he can't keep he'll talk big about all these gameplay mechanics and this and that that he wants to add to the game and by the time the game comes out it is a shell of what he claimed it was going to be yeah and his fucking flagship was fable and was a perfect example of that because i yeah. followed it back in the day when it was like project eco or Ego yeah. or whatever the yeah fuck it was. exactly and he was telling us about how like you get to play the first promise he made was that you get to play as a child and that you're going to play as this child and you're going to grow up and you're going to you know, watch yourself grow up and yeah. get old and you'll be molded. grow beards yeah. and all this and that. You'll be molded by your environment and the person that you become as an adult will be shaped by the experiences that you've had. And literally when we got the game, what was happened nothing. was you played as a child and then there was like a couple scenes and then you grew older all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, like it was nothing yeah. like what you thought, what the way he was describing no, it. Yeah. And this continued through Fable 2. And through Fable exactly. 3. Exactly. Fable and 2, he was talking about you would be able to affect the economy by, like, stealing shipments of goods and stuff like that. And, like, it would it would later on yeah. down the road affect, like, the, the price and stuff like that. And it just did not come yeah. for and, and, I mean, don't and, – and that, and that was the biggest problem is the ideas that they would talk about sounded so fucking awesome. Yeah. I was like, dude, if you could pull that off even halfway, that would be amazing. It never even came close. No. Never even came close. And he kept doing it. And kept doing it, and kept doing it, and people kept eating the shit up. I gotta for imagine reason. as a developer too, working on Fable, hearing him make these promises, and like looking <laughs> yeah. at him and be like, uh, "We're we're not doing this. Like, why is he saying that? Are we gonna do this later on down the road?" It's like, no, just keep going, just keep yeah. going. No, I could see him at I could see him at the office, like at the water cooler, like you know when they're talking about Fable three, and like they just saw the press conference and be like. Dude, this guy, it, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. We're is not going to be able to do that. Is he working on a different game? Because yeah. that's not the game we're Did, making. Yeah, are they closing understand. down the studio? Is it, did he open up a new studio? Like, yeah. this guy's nuts. But with that, after all the, you know, shitting on Peter Molyneux's chest, it kind of goes to, I mean, the game industry in general. Because the game industry is really guilty of doing this stuff. And it's always weird to me when I see it. It's like uh, like no other entertainment media do you see people beefing up their product the way this is. If I saw my favorite band talking about how they were going to redefine rock music and redefine the genre and uh, they're going to play music that I've never heard before, I would be like this is utterly ridiculous. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to take it seriously. Even if it was even if it's a band that you love, that you've heard music yeah. by them and you loved it. And then you heard them start talking about how they were going to revolutionize the music world. It's like, you guys should probably play that down. Yeah. Calm it down I, a little bit. Like, my favorite band of all time is Pink Floyd, and they literally did that. But if they said they were going to do that, I'd be like, you guys are fucking ridiculous. Shut up. This is, this is retarded. But you'll see all these developers. You'll see their Kickstarters and their trailers and their Steam pages, and, and they'll be like, oh, most other companies do this, but we decided that we're going to do this, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the genre. You'll, it's, we're going to have an experience that you've never had before. And I'm like, yeah, right. I just looked at your game, and five minutes in, I could tell that looks like Diablo. Yeah. That looks exactly like Diablo. Not I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Not only that, but like they put in the, like that early access and stuff like that. And I feel like they make those promises so they can get like people behind their game. They can get a bunch of money, and then they fucking bail before the finished product is even and, done. And that happens a lot. But I and, and it's a double. When it comes to early access or Kickstarter pages, you know things like that. It, that's a double edged sword. Like I get it. Making games is incredibly expensive. And with such a saturated market, convincing somebody to give you millions of dollars to make your game, it's, I mean, it's a hard sell. I mean, very few people have an original game 
that is going to be successful. And I mean, even when you do it now, it has to be so far in left field that people think you're nuts to even try to make that game. I mean, imagine some guy comes up and he's like, Hey, I'm a small company. We want to make a game where you drive around in cars playing soccer. Yeah. No, thank you. We're okay. You can, you can leave now. But then we get things like that Rocket League. Happened, that it, actually. Hey, that's exactly what happened. They went to EA, and EA turned them down back in 2011. Yeah. Now look at what we got. We got Rocket League, who's made like $150 million off a $2 million budget. You know? It's, it, it, was so, it was so crazy it worked. And it's because – it wasn't because it was so crazy. It's because what they did is they took a crazy idea, and they made a well-crafted, executed game. Yeah. They made it simple. They made it something anybody could pick up and play, but had depth to master, and the mechanics worked very well. It's a, really, at, at its core, it's a physics-based game. It's about mastering physics, yeah. and the physics are, are spot on. But that's the idea, is you know that you just – the good games will come through. Yeah, that's the thing is, like, I want action. I want people to be – to do – I want people to be making games. When I see those type of things where people talk about or they attach other games that have already been made to their own titles and stuff like that, it's like you're trying too hard to market something that I have not played. Like yeah. I just want you to make a good game. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't yeah, or you're trying to market and uh build your whole game off something that I've already played. Yeah. And but you want me to look at your game as if it's something brand new and, and wondrous and amazing. No, it's not. I mean, look, it's video games, okay? And as of right now, there we're basically getting a lot of regurgitated shit. You play an RPG, you probably played something like it before. You're playing a shooter, you almost guaranteed have played something like it before. And everything in between. It's rare to get something completely original. But that's fine. It's like movies. It's like books. It's like music. It's like art. It's like anything else. Most things are influenced by something else that's come before it. Yeah. And that's fine. What's weird and the whole uh, basis of this argument is when you come at me with an idea that's obviously heavily influenced from other games and try and tell me that you're going to give me an experience I've never had before. That's crap. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. Very, very, very few games come to me with an experience I've never had before. Yeah. I bring up Rocket League because that's a, that's the one of most recent memory. Rocket League. Yeah. When's the last time you played a game where it was like soccer with cars? <laughs> never. Never. Never ever. That's Rocket League. Yeah. But at the completely same time, original. like, there's a huge difference between that too and somebody else making just completely batshit promises they don't fucking keep. Right. Like P Peter Molyneux. Right. Here we are back again. A guy who makes – grand promises and that sound amazing and does, it's not even that like he makes grand promises and it doesn't end up being like that he doesn't even get close yeah he doesn't even get close like it's literally so watered down that you've hyped me up for this game that you've been talking about and all this shit that was going to happen and then what you end up giving me is something kind of like zelda uh, in comic book form because there's always like this uh layer of humor to the fables yeah, and the thing is, there there, there were redeeming qualities about Fable. And right. If, if it would have been sold as something, you know, as original and on its own, and there was no hype behind it and stuff like that, there would have been things that, as I played it, could have appreciated about it and stuff like that. But as a developer, the things that he promised, and through the development prom like process, he kept talking about it. And when I got to finish product, it's like I can't enjoy what I'm playing right now because what you promised me is not here. Right. That was that was the thing is all the promises you've made, you've broken so many of them that by the time we get the game, we can only look down on it. If you literally would have said nothing and just released Fable for what it is, it probably would have – people would have looked at it much higher. They, it would have been like a cult classic Yeah. because it would be like, man, this Fable game just kind of like is – you know, just kind of – formed into existence and it's actually pretty good because the honestly if you were able to look at fable and you didn't know anything about the promises peter mullen you made and you just looked at it as just a game they're not bad games no they're the, actually pretty decent yeah, games and the thing is is like there were a lot of tropes with things that you could do that they had fun with and stuff like that like i remember when you got the cards for like you could change your hair and your you know your facial hair and stuff like that 
I remember there was a time where like you could do that, and then they had fun with it. And like I remember meeting a guy where he was like, I have a daughter, and I hadn't gotten far enough to delve into the relationship part of Fable. And this guy tells me that he has a daughter is looking to get married, but she only likes a guy with a certain type of haircut. And so he gives me this card that has the haircut on. It's like this stupid, ridiculous bowl cut looking thing. <laughs> a reverse mohawk. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I get it. So let's do this. I'm, I haven't, I haven't dealt with it yet. Like, let's dive into the relationship part of this. So I get the bowl cut and stuff like that. And then he keeps giving me cards. He's like, she likes that, but she also likes this. And it's this ridiculous mustache, like the Chef Boyardee type fucking like oh, yeah. curly like, like mustache. The, like the old school sailor mustache. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, uh, all right. I've already. I've got, already you already got reverse mohawk. Yeah. Mine's like I've already stash. made the decision to be a part of this. So <laughs> let's go all in. Like fucking I'll take the mustache and stuff. And he even takes it a step further. And he's like, well, she likes these type of mutton chops and stuff. So at the end of the, the Man, quest. you look like something straight out of like. 1875 yeah, huh? <laughs> i look ridiculous and then fucking i get to him and i come back with all my ridiculous haircuts and facial hair and shit like that and he's like i don't even have a daughter and then he runs off and like you could tell there were times where they took things that were a part of that game and had fun with it and were implemented the developers themselves looked like they were trying to do new and interesting fun yeah. things but it was this guy that was apart from that that seemed like he was trying to sell something that didn't exist. Yeah. I think what he's most guilty of is consistently and purposefully selling themselves short. Yeah. He set themselves up for failure. He made goals he knew he couldn't reach, and so by the time they actually came out with a decent game, it didn't matter because in the eyes of everybody else who's been paying attention to these games, they were a failure. They didn't meet – the standards that he was making for themselves, and they never were going to. He they, under- they, they were destined to fail. Yeah, he undermined the developers at that point. Right, and the- that's why that studio's not around anymore. Yeah, Lionhead's gone. Yeah, even though people in, in some weird dimension that exists within our own take Peter Molyneux seriously. <laughs> they, still, they still think of him as a, as a, a game designer and developer, and I'm like, no, nah, what this guy is is compared a, to what? Compared yeah. to like Hideo Kojima and shit. Like yeah, that? or it's compared like, to some dude who's making a uh, weird little uh, flash games in his uh, bedroom. I mean, like we, uh, you, you've never come through with anything you've ever promised to come through with. Yeah. So nobody can ever really take you seriously. Yeah. Sure, fables were decent. At least the first two. The fable two was probably the best. Three had some gameplay design. Choices that were just unbelievably yeah. bad. The interactive menu where you that wasn't back even to the, interactive. It to was the hub world. Yeah, it was so completely tedious that like I can't even believe that somebody thought that was okay. <laughs> yeah, it passed all stages of development. People saw right. that and they were like, "This is good." Seriously, go along with it. And I, and I, and I mean, I don't I don't try to bring this up, but like I I'm a programmer, so I I see software development through all its stages and. At some point, somebody realizes this is a bad idea. Let's not do this. This was such a glaring flaw that I can't even believe it made it into release. <laughs> it's unbelievable to me that so, that so many people thought that this was a good idea, that they were going to see it through to the end. Again, and that was one of those times, too, where there were things about Fable 3 that I really liked. You know what I mean? As a young king, when you were dealing with like your mentor, the guy that was like a soldier and stuff like that, there were a lot of like heartfelt moments that happened. There were a lot of good things about that game, but they all just got destroyed by these fucking things that got implemented. And, and, they, weren't, and they were gameplay mechanics that like, you could have – Found so many ways around him, and you just let them shit on the game, yeah. and it completely fucking ruined it. It really did. But it, you know, it, that's uh, developers that, yeah. stop stop over. I hope that he's exiled. I hope he's living in some like colony in fucking Africa where everybody. Now you know what I hope he is. I hope like he's in some like weird opium den in like, <laughs> Thailand, yeah. drinking snake blood and smoking <laughs> opium, yeah. like in these dark dens. And just like fucking hating himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him dead. He's not. He doesn't seem like a bad guy. But it's like, uh, dude, you don't. You I should not you be making get, games anymore. I want you to be haunted by your mistakes. <laughs> yeah, fuck, yeah, like keep you up at night. I don't want you to sleep 
more than like three hours a night because <laughs> you know three hours straight because of your fucking broken phone.